Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. I've shown you guys some of Mom Miniatures from Spain's various dwarf lines here on this channel in the past. And if you haven't had a chance to check them out, uh, really a lot of fun, characterful models. Great for a very old hammer aesthetic. Or if you just want some, you know, rank and file for filling in traditional fantasy wargaming tropes, they've got you covered. And today's video in particular is going to cover one of their more recent releases, uh, something I was looking forward to because it kind of went above and beyond what we've seen so far. And no, I'm not talking about the orcs that they've made. They've done some great kind of savage forest orcs. I don't know if I've ever talked about these guys or not, now that I think about it. And if I haven't, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll get right on that. But that's a whole different topic. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Warriors of the North. And if your Warriors are from the North, chances are in a fantasy game that means they're going to be some sort of chaos warrior. And that's what we've got today. Now, my glue and cleaning job may not be the most fantastic, but that's okay. I hope it gets the message across. Now, what's cool about these guys is that they are totally modular. Now, so far they don't have a lot of variety in terms of weapon choices. And let me, let me actually rectify that. What I should say is they don't really have any swords yet. Because, as you can see, we've got mace options, we've got some various shield options, tons of head options. Uh, one thing, though, and I should also point out that there are multiple body options. Similar, but they all are different. And there might be more than just that. Um, and at least a dozen heads or so of various horny protrusions. So when I said that there weren't a lot of and weapon options. Uh, we have a ton of axes, which is to be expected. Some very interesting maces, clubs. You can see we've got the spike mace in his hand there. And I'm looking around, I thought I grabbed some more. Um, I do have a couple of various helmets. This is one that I broke because that's what happens at the time with me. Uh, a very traditional dual horned helmet. Another spiky piece. Single gladiator style spike. Some of the other shield shapes. You can see they have more protrusions. These are more hexagonal. Another model that I've put together here. So, as I was saying, they are quite modular and they stack up pretty nicely to models that are often in people's collections. Give me a sec there. Surprisingly, though, all of these guys had puddle bases. I was kind of taken aback by that. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but just be aware of it. Um, even the unsupported ones have those on there. I guess if you really wanted to get rid of it, you can obviously, you know, cut it off in Blender or something. I don't think it makes a huge difference. But you can see size-wise, they're going to look pretty nice with what's already out there from GW, if you use, or any other model, really. If you're going to use bases, though, I really strongly suggest smaller flat ones, and especially with the fact that they've got the puddle base already on there. With the smaller flat stuff, if you've got, like, Warlord or Frostgrave, those real flat ones like that, these are perfect for that. You can see here, they're just almost the same at eye level. Really good in that regard. Um, it's nothing, you know, a bunch of sand and glue isn't going to cover up anyways. Uh, they don't really want to sit well on a 25 millimeter base. I recommend a 30 or a 28 or any other size. You can see it kind of have a little bit of an overhang there. On the other hand, this Frostgrave one, like I said, works perfectly. Do I have any Frostgrave figures handy? I probably do, and of course when I'm looking for them, I can't find them. It's always how it is. 
do have a Reaper figure handy if you is something you wanted to use. And one of the other nice things is mom so far, I always feel weird saying mom, like my mom is the last person to want to be messing with this stuff. She tolerated it when we were kids and I'm assuming she tolerates it still. And she's tolerated it with my dad for, you know, all their years of marriage. So maybe that is a good thing. They've got that name. I don't know. But in addition to the Warriors of the North, we also have Barbarian modules. Figures. Module figures, I should say. Now, one thing I found with these models, at first I was like, oh, these are just, you know, shirtless versions of the other guys. Actually, they're not exactly the same. Uh, there are some variants in the armor, in the, you know, obviously these guys have a lot more mail. These guys have a lot more fur. And what's interesting is there's a slight variation on the size of the parts. These guys are just as modular as the warriors in heavier armor. One of the issues I had though, as you can see, there's a noticeable little gap there in the neck connection. Just to give you a look at another of the bodies, you can see here how it looks without anything attached. Again, this is another totally different piece. And I need to clean that little bit off there. But I really like, I don't want to say the simplicity, but it is to a degree. They're very clean in their profile. You know, they're not covered in just ridiculous amounts of filigree. There's not all kinds of stuff carved all over them or, you know, ritualistic tattoos everywhere. It's, it's pretty straightforward, and I like that. It's clean in that regard. Now, these guys are supposed to come with spears as you can see i originally remember them saying something along the lines that they wanted to make like saga miniatures for saga war bands which i'm assuming there's a fantasy version as far as you know i've always been aware saga has always been like more of a historical thing and i mean the scale it's not that bad if you were going to go with historicals again using a more flat base to kind of level things out but What's interesting is with a little, actually minimal, playing around, I actually grabbed some of the axes from the heavier infantry guys. And there are plenty of head options for the barbarians as well. There are a couple of helmetless options. As you can see, I've got one on in there right now. And again, so there's a little bit of a gap in the neck there. I was mentioning that earlier, and then I rambled off onto another tangent. But... Unfortunately, the heads between the two are a little bit more, well, they're going to require a little bit more work. Um, those are the same. Those are a barbarian one. I guess I used all of the ones that I had. Okay. Playing around with it, and this probably is, nope, they're about the same. And I've got some kind of a... Um, the connection point, the ball joint there on the heads for some of the models are a little bit larger than the others. So do be aware, but I think with a little bit of effort, you can probably sand them, cut them down so that there isn't a big issue and it's nothing a little bit of green stuff couldn't, you know, fix up either. I'm particularly not a fan of the spears with these guys. I'm going to build a couple with them just because I printed them and I've got plenty of bodies. But to me, you know, Chaos Barbarians, you know, Marauder Barbarians, whatever you want to call these guys or whatever you want to use them for, just axes feel more appropriate. But I would really love to see Mom come back and actually make some swords for these guys. And, ho you know, who knows? Maybe we'll see some kind of like a mutant-possessed model kit later on from them that possibly has some swords. And they may even have some in there I just haven't found. If you guys know where I can find them, by all means, just point them out to me. I'd love to have some, but really just fun, nice, easy to see profile-wise on the table models in that regard. And they also have some really cool leader models. Now, this is the Warriors Warband Leader, which I was quite fond of. 
I do like the dual axes. I went ahead and glued him all together. The only separate pieces were his arms, actually. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't going to really work out with the smaller guys, and he is substantially larger. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the reason it was a bit of an issue is because the forearm, you can see where he's got like those corded gauntlets around his forearm there. Those were actually where the model glues. So that's where the hole is to support that piece. And just to give you guys an idea, I'm not kidding. There's a pretty big difference in size. I'm assuming that was intentional. I kind of like it, you know, makes a good exalted hero of chaos or whatever you want to use it for in that regard. Or if you just want to have more of a, you know, larger than life model, um, with the blood of giants or some, you guys can make up your own backstory quite easily. But uh, I like now, and I think this is one of the first times that I can really recall a model that was actually from their resin releases actually got redone as a 3D printable model. I am, I am almost 100% positive. I could be wrong, but this is another of their possessed chaos models and just wild and fun. You can see like the flesh distorting there as he becomes more chaotic, I guess. I love the horns and tattered flag things on his back. And I just want to point this out. Uh, he was also a multi-part kit. The arms, the horns, and the back part of his cloak. And when I originally printed him, and if you notice there's, uh-oh, I really freaked out because Obviously, there is no left leg there. Um, that's because the leg is actually part of the cloak. So just be aware of that. I wasn't at first, and I really legitimately am like pawing through all the you know discarded supports. Where is it? Where is it? And then I'm like, oh, let me try attaching that. And then I realized, yeah, doing so on camera isn't as easy. There we go. And it's a pretty nice smooth fit there, so that's always good to see. One of the other things that's always worth mentioning with mom miniatures is that their prices are quite reasonable. Even their resin-only releases have been very reasonable. I mean, obviously things have kind of tickled, trickled, not tickled, trickled up over the years due to whatever reasons. But I, I can tell you that I've always felt like I got my money's worth um, and that's even with shipping overseas here to the States, they've always been pretty good, but obviously with 3d printing, um, I know their Patreon and my mini factory tribes stuff is at a pretty reasonable level. So if you haven't had a chance, do take a look. They've got a lot of fun models, a lot of character in their models. And like I said, this is the first time I think they've really kind of gone all in with the modular stuff and I'm all here for it. I'd love to see more from them. And there's always something new and interesting coming out from these guys. So, you know, it is always worth taking a look. And so with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.